All right, guys, we'll get cracking. Welcome to week three. We're gonna be giving you a few questions about something called intuitive physics. What I'll ask you to do first when we hand them out is just to work on them yourselves. Then we're gonna discuss them as small groups. Don't change your answers. I know it might be tempting if you kind of see someone else with a completely different answer than you, but don't worry about it. Uh, just leave it as it is, and then we'll discuss them. That's the interesting bit, if you, guys have it, if, if you guys have different answers. So it's flat on the table. It's like this on the table, and you the ball goes flying through, and then it exits. Which way does it exit? Uh, a lot of people think that the ball goes through the, the coil, and then exits and continues on that trajectory. How many people went with this one? when it continued on that direction. Two? I know I've seen more than that, come on. I saw a good five or six of those. And the correct answer, directly out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. So th that's kind of the point of this exercise. So we have, nobody's trained to be fighter pilots or um, astronauts or coil handlers or something in the first case. You don't have a lot of experience with these types of problems, even though they are fairly counterintuitive. A lot of people don't see these uh, solutions. The, the, the punchline here is that there's nothing that's going to happen if you're wrong in these particular cases. Your understanding of how these sort of things work is good enough to get you by. You're all living, right? You've, you've functioned pretty well this far. It's, it's pretty important. Um, that you understand that these, that these heuristics, these shortcuts, these rules of thumb that we're gonna be talking about in this course, um, your failings in a sense, your irrationalities, are, aren't really failings in any sense. They're, they're almost sufficient to get you by in the world. They're, they're good enough. Uh, people who are, grew up in East Asia, so are culturally East Asian, uh, Mongolia, Chinese, Japanese, they prefer this image here on the right. And people from Western cultures, those even if you're uh, racially Asian but you grew up in a Western culture, you're more likely to prefer images on the left. Yes, one of the, one of the, the explanations for this, or the uh, interpretations, is that East Asians prefer context in the images that they, uh, they create and generate, whereas Westerners, it's more, um, it's more object and person based than it is context based. Try to guess which pictures were drawn by people from Western cultures versus East Asian cultures. Put your hand up if you think this was drawn by a Westerner. Put your hand up if you think it was drawn by an Easterner. Can anybody try and articulate what they found the difference was? Westerners pretty much stuck to exactly what you said to put in. And then the Easterners kind of added a bit of extra stuff in there and we kind of kept it pretty basic. Yep. Sky, like it looks blue to us, but like in the air at the moment, like you can't see blue. Yep. If there was a mirror, like maybe where that table was, if that was a wall, yeah. I feel like I'd be able to see myself in it. You know, I assume because it was going forward that it, the air at that speed would push the bomb backwards, if that makes sense. I have no idea. And I, I really have no idea about physics and I'll just kind of, you know, it's moving forward which would kind of push it back a little bit, that sort of thing. 